Welcome back, everybody, to OD&D Presents, A Fistful of Dice, A Deadlands Campaign. <laughs> I'm your DM, Jeff, responsible for killing, I mean, guiding uh, our lovely posse through the wilderness, and let's reintroduce our posse. Hey, we'll now. Start, <laughs> we'll start on the phone, Josh. Uh, yeah, so my name's Josh. I play Percy Clemens, uh, also known as Clem, a deserter from the Union Army. Nice. And in the room? Uh, okay, I'm Kimberly. I play Allie. Uh, she is a traveling saleswoman. Nice. Uh, je suis Franck Renault. Uh, I am a very bad accents. <laughs> I'm Not as bad as uh, Percy. <laughs> French trapper. Uh, extraordinaire. Ooh. And she'll Ooh. be playing Airy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm Dan. Uh, and I am playing uh, Bartholomew Champsworth of the Atlanta Champsworths. I am traveling to Deseret to make my name for, because my father thinks I'm a waste of space. I am from the Confederate States of America, in case he didn't pick up on Do you have your passport? Yeah. There's no passports the, in the 1800s. This is the Weird West, and we're not actually up north, so yeah. you know, he's, he's not in uh, risk of being shot. I, I have a question for Ari. Um, <laughs> Go get it! Uh, so, what <sighs> is your character's first name? Uh, probably Frances, but she's known as Pronk. And how do you say my name is in French? Uh, je m'appelle. Yeah, I have that as your first name. <laughs> you just hit me this session. <laughs> All right, Jim Apple. Apple. <laughs> Jim Apple Frank. Oh. Of the Atlanta Franks. Hey, that's pretty good, you. <laughs> How, wait, no, Bill, we're not done. We're not done. How did you spell that? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, now we're going to get into the nitty gritty here. Uh, S H E. M A P E L Shemapple. <laughs> Remember that Josh is going to have to be an NPC named Shemapple Frank Shemapple. later on. <laughs> or She Maple? <laughs> oh, somebody please give us a recap of what happened. <laughs> we were on a train. Uh. Uh, that one, Allie got a map by, uh, bluffing by bluffing like a motherfucker. Um, and then, uh, me and, uh, Frank were getting, uh, drunk. And lo I was losing an arm wrestling fight. Yep. And then, um, Percy was about to kind of beat up a guy who's guarding a Crate from the Natural Museum of was it Boston? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, Clem is fine, and he was willing to give him a helping hand, not <laughs> beat the fella up. And then, uh, and then uh, the train got derailed, and we killed a bunch of banditos, and half the train is in a gulch, yes. where our luggage is. My yes. fancy suit. After the train derailed, our heroes handily defeated some bandits. But can they defeat an even tougher foe, Mother Nature? Can they discover what happened to the rest of the train? Find out now on OD&D Presents, A Fistful of Dice.
I forget. Did you guys kill the leader, or did the leader escape? He was the first one down. Yeah, the other yeah, one. that's what I thought. Somebody else escaped. Because it does affect how I award you at the end. <laughs> oh yeah, we brought him down first. Because yes. we were hoping, we were hoping if we bring him down, everyone else would leave. They didn't. They more or less did. If <laughs> I, I mean, they, yeah, they left for being <laughs> shot. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything anybody else would like to add to that recap? No. <laughs> Sounded pretty good to me. All right. That's everything I remember. If you really want to know what happened, you can just listen to the last episode. Well, You'll get Jeff, 50% Jeff of the story. I remember. <laughs> I remember. I have notes. I could have told you the whole thing. Well, Technically, if I he won't. listens really carefully, he can hear everything that happened, even in the part we didn't record. Although, uh, oh, wait, I wait. would like to add that yeah. there are 11 passengers and 6 crew on this train. Thank you. Uh, because I have good note-taking as well. <laughs> nice. Is that one of your boons? <laughs> I don't have any of those things because I rely on Dan to take all my notes. Yeah, me too. That's true. I don't even have a notepad. Actually, I did have one. We're screwed. That black one. Yeah. I think it's behind you. I, I have to take notes or suddenly your Texan becomes Irish and then he is German in the next scene. So, you, you know. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Yep. Okay. So. Jim of Boston. Jim of there, was a, there was a hot redhead. There was an older man, a mustache man who me. dressed well with the treasure map. And me. The Mormon missionary. Also me. A 20s woman who was a rich bitch who wanted money. Me a too. noisy woman who was a reporter Definitely for the me. tombstone epitaph. And there are twin brothers. Plus four, uh, in a four family of four, something like yes. that. Yes. Yeah, weren't family they all four. like gingers or something? See, and then the, I also made notes of how the there train was, was laid out. What a mess! After the train robbers have been chased off, uh, you can set about assessing your situation. The locomotive and coal car are effectively destroyed. Pete Franklin and M. A. Margaret. Uh, the engineer and fireman uh, were killed in the crash, very likely, oh, and everyone else on the train is at least slightly injured. Uh, although the incident seems to have made the Wilson boys, the two small children running around that were little heathens, mm -hmm. even meaner. The, the conductor, night crew, and the well-dressed gentleman that uh, was being rather snooty from the nat nature museum is Mr. all missing. Yes, Mr. Seabirth is they're all missing along with the baggage car and the caboose. Okay. Wait, the whole car and caboose are gone? Yes, the whole baggage car and caboose are My gone. My suit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the only member of the crew remaining is Harold, the cook. Uh, he says he the is train is important. at least 50 miles from the nearest station, and it's a fairly cold night. Well, as a uh, member of the train, I feel like you should probably get walking. <laughs> is it snowy, or is it? So we're, we're in the Desert dining cold. car. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Or... Yeah. We yeah. were in the dining so, car. I believe we all fought that fight from the dining car. We did. Right. Right. So the locomotive uh, and firebox or fi coal car, which is a ghost rock car, are <laughs> hanging over the bridge in oh, the yeah. ravine. The, fir the sleeper car, then the next uh, passenger car, the dining car, and then behind the dining car was the baggage car and the caboose. I have a diagram the... right here. There you go. And I'm going to put a little X's through these. Because yep. they're gone. They're gone, sir. They're gone. All right. And the locomotive engine and coal car are exploded. So, the, so what you're the... telling me is there's still beds. Yes. And God. there is... Well, do you ask Harold about the food? No. Okay. I don't. <laughs> I don't know about these these two buttheads. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. 
All right. <laughs> Should we? So, so there you go. Uh, Probably how much food do we have? What do you guys do? Probably was in the baggage car. Well, I guess we. So we have two cars. cars. There's, there's yeah. uh, three passenger cars and the dining car. Are we still connected to the ones hanging over the cliff? Yes. Oh, we should probably disconnect those. Yeah, so Clem, uh, assessing the car situation, goes, Well, seeing as how we... Uh, you, you will excuse my poor affectation as it does change as I travel throughout this weary land. Uh, <laughs> looks like we should disconnect those two cars to... To, we're, we're not pulling him up is what I'm trying to say. Let's cut off the finger where the infection is. Speaking is of, I'm going to cast lay on hands on myself. <laughs> not, not where everyone can see you. Please go behind a tree. So wait, what level of wound was it that I have? I had three somethings in my gut. So three wounds? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, I think that's moderately wounded. <laughs> I've got wound level of wind, light, heavy, serious, critical, maimed. All of those? He he took a lot of damage in his. Well, no, I'm just saying old, those, are the, those are the those are the the because because depending on what I'm at is going to be my healing difficulty that I have to roll against. So you are. I'm looking it up. There's five. So count from the bottom. Which one's the third one? Okay, so I'm at serious. Serious? Yes. Yeah, see, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take care of myself because I'm gonna throw up a little bit. <laughs> That's a ten yeah. of nine. So let's see here. Base damage yeah. healing. So Oxford's Dictionary defines healing as. No. Uh, let's see, use a circle to heal the wounds and afflictions of others. Not them, oh, not themselves. Oh. So I'm just going to kind of sit down. All right, well, I'm mm. going to reach into my bag and produce a vial of something mm. green. Noxious. And say, take this, it'll make you feel better. Will it? No. Like, out of character, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you for the free medicine. That's what I do. <laughs> She's like, mm, I don't care much for it. Okay, I drink, I drink her snake oil. <laughs> so can you do it? Nothing happens. Anything happen? No, uh, it's just like sugar water. Doesn't really feel like much. It just kind of tastes like a hummingbird <laughs> feeder. Please tell me Bartholomew's still trying to touch himself, though, not knowing ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't. It's not. I, I don't consider it magic. It's faith healing. So I'm just praying <laughs> to God right now, and it's rubbing, like and rubbing much, my tum tum. Yeah, my my guts, my gizzards, and my guts. Clear, clearly, you're too close to. Salt Lake, your Baptist God isn't welcome here. Mm. Indeed. Ow. Uh, <sighs> Alice and Shamapel, could I could I get the two of you to help me make sure we get these two carts dropping off into the cliff? We can't have these pulling the rest of the train down. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So who's who's Finger? gonna pull the lynch pin? Uh, I stood away from the train. I don't have but any tinkering. I, I will I since I head in this operation if the other two are fine. So what is required to pull the pin? Smarts? A strength check. Oh. And also oh, oh, not to fall that. into the cliff. <laughs> into the... I can try. Let's swear strength. strength. Strength is all the way under spirit oh. before bigger. I know. I'm I'm... Not, it's... Eh. Mine's 2d4, so I'm strong. Mine's, Mine's 3d4. 1D4. Mine's 1d8. Isn't that the same thing? Uh, Actually, mine has mine probably got better chance at better results. <laughs> yep. What is yours, uh, Josh? What was oh, that? No, we're taking the highest number. What, what did you say? Uh, 48. Looks like uh, Clem brings the muscle. <laughs> You're the muscle yeah. man. All right. uh, unless somebody has, like, drive-in locomotive or tinkering. Oh. No. Or something like that. I tinker. Is my best shot. <laughs> I tinker. Wait, where is it? Tinker. No, or no. it's under knowledge, right? <laughs> or what is that Slide under? Slide of hand. I've got like we didn't hand ask hand you, Bartholomew. You. Tinkering is under smarts. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't. I only have a little bit of streetwise. 
Okay. I just, I have, I have a boon that makes me good with uh, mechanical Hi, things. <laughs> I could bluff the pin out. Is that... Is that what that help? Does that help at all? <laughs> Alright, do you Because wanna... I've got mechanically inclined. Mechanical devices aren't common you on the frontier. Neither of those who know how to fix them. Character with this edge adds plus two rules involving anything <laughs> involving fixing or understanding machinery, including tinkering and mad science. <sighs> okay. Well, I, w I would let you make a tinkering roll to figure out how to disconnect the... the... It's tinkering, not tinkling. Oh, don't get <laughs> but I don't that. have actually any numbers in tinkering, so what would, what would that... <laughs> What do you roll for that? I choose to use my strength. You I'm would shot boy over there sitting in the corner. What's <coughs> your smarts roll? One d four. One d four. So you you You're would the worst. roll a one d four at a minus four for untrained. No. But a so plus two. No. Plus two. <laughs> it's either me or Josh. Josh. So I, I fancy myself a tinkerer, but I am not. You well, or you whittle by chewing on wood. You think you're a beaver. I, I, I like machines. I might, I might be able to help. Sit down and drink your, your green noxious stuff. Oh, God, drink up, buddy. Is it fermented at all? Nah. It well. tastes like sugar water. It's, a hum, it's like a hummingbird feeder, only green. Okay, Josh, do you want to do strength? I mean, uh... Yeah. Clam. Clam. Uh... <laughs> Before I step out and I step over to Bartholomew and take out my flask of uh, the good stuff and go, this is what we used in the war, and just tip some up in his mouth before he can say no or yes and then step oh. out too. But, but. Oh. And what does that do? It's just <laughs> it's some strong juice. alcohol, I assume. So does it not heal either? <laughs> no, none of us heal. <laughs> <laughs> So now it tastes like sugary, hard alcohol. <laughs> we believe... No, now it's German. <laughs> I can't do my accent. We right. believe no. in the healing power of <laughs> sugar water. <laughs> oh. We are... Okay. We are okay, so all right. Clem goes to pull that pin immortal. right out of it. <laughs> okay. What do you got? Okay. Uh, hold on here. Thank you. Uh, seven. Seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you get, you, you managed to figure out how to get your hands on the, well, you described to me how you would almost succeed, but still fail. <laughs> <laughs> um what what was the pin called again the pin <laughs> i don't know what they're this, called this terminology is just outside my yeah. even as a so tinkerer I, that thinking, i am uh, all of my locomotive knowledge is from what i've seen in <coughs> movies this is not clem talking this there is are no <laughs> movies we went through this <laughs> I'm talking. I oh. swear I've seen like just a <laughs> pin pulled straight out, but uh, Clem doesn't realize the physics of two cars shearing this, like holding this pin in. Right. And yeah. So he struts on over. No, no. And, uh, Wait, what did know, he roll? He, he knows how to lift. He knows how to protect his back, even though OSHA standards weren't around in this time. And, <laughs> Grabs the pin, kind of crab walk, stanced over it. <laughs> but to no avail? No, no. Try as you might, pound on it. That that pin is in there. It's bent from the train wreck. Oh, no. You're not getting it out. I limp on over. I limp on over, and I'm like, I think this is what you need to do. So that is two minus four, so plus negative two, two plus two. That's a zero. <laughs> the train suddenly springs to life and rolls over your foot. Bam! <laughs> Take a maim to your left foot. Oh, great. <laughs> we're, we're talking about Bartholomew, right? No, I, I, I'm joking, Dan. Dan, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Uh... Clem kicks the pin unsuccessfully, moving it more. You sorry sod of God. 
<laughs> the, does anyone here have a saw or maybe a blowtorch or anything like that? Uh, Cook, you have a stove. Can you use that to uh, melt metal? Uh, he he wanders out and he's carrying his sawed-off shotgun. And, you know, he's a big guy, big gut, apron. You know, looks like a camp cook. And he's got his shotgun slung over his shoulder and he scratches his hat head with the other. He says, well... My camp stove ain't going to do much good on that, but we can try. But it seems pretty stable. Shouldn't we figure out what happened to the rest of the cars? I mean, maybe the robbers took them. Oh, Oh. yeah, my suit. We need to get my suit. I can't do this without my suit. Obviously, we can see why you're still just a cook on this train. Uh... (laughs) That seemed a bit bit impolite, sir. I'm sorry for my colleague here. He knows not what he says. I think you've (laughs) done an excellent job. Without a cook on a train, we would not have had dinner or anything to eat. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you folks don't get down and see if there isn't some other food in the baggage cart, we're all going to starve up here. I thought they Else the we better cart. start yeah, walking. Yeah, that's the point. We're going to have to go find the baggage uh, cart and get the food out of it. Dang. Okay, legitimately, I just want to try pouring some of Alice's snake oil on the bolt real quick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and? Bartholomew, uh, may I see the last sip of that uh, concoction Alice gave you? Mm, sure, he you. And I pour it on the pins. Is it actually oil or is it just sugar water? It's just sugar water. It's pretty okay. sugar water. Do another strength check. <laughs> I was really hoping it would just burn through it. But okay. <laughs> I just drank that. <laughs> right. Oh, I aced it. Ooh. Ooh. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, so uh, 13 total. Thirteen. Okay, hold on. I need to uh, see. Okay, so you pull the pen, or you're able to get it loose, and the the train shudders a little bit. But luckily for you, the engineer had been pulling the brakes um, before it went over. So the and. <laughs> It just kind of slides back a little with an uneasy groan of metal on metal and stops about six feet away. So it let go? Yeah. All right. So at least now uh, the beds are safe. uh, So there's a place to hunker down when it gets a bit brisk in the evenings here in the desert. And welcome, now we'll everybody. go get some food, too. What do you do on this train, sir? Well, I'm the cook, you see. I, I cook. <laughs> right, he didn't say that he is the one who maintains the pantry or any some, some such thing. Well, you bring him a hot dog, he will make you a hot dog that you will well, leave. Am I right, sir? So the the larder in in the dining car is is getting kind of low. I mean, I can only feed those of you that are left maybe a day, two, if I stretch the rations. Well, I think we should get, did you say the sun is setting? Yes. I would say uh, we get a good night's sleep, rest up, heal up any gut wounds anyone might have, (laughs) and... uh, Go ahead and uh, maybe uh, find the car. And the, the car's going to be gone way long gone by morning, isn't it? We should we I probably it just be... fell over the cliff. No, they so, disappeared. About then, the beautiful woman uh, from earlier that had been quiet, keeping mostly to herself, the one who you had overheard. Uh, <coughs> talking about how rich her daddy was down in Texas. The 20s woman. Oh, yeah. Comes up and says, uh, 
excuse me, she's talking to Harold, the cook now. She says, I, I'm terribly worried about the rest of the train. Why don't we send some people down there and see what happened? I can't imagine the train car could get that far, especially since they broke loose near the bottom of this here hill. So you uh, getting... you saw them break loose, did you? Or are you assuming that's what must have happened? She just kind of stands back and does the fan of white towards the rest of the, the train. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, I think it broke loose, sir. And I mean, we are in a world where ghosts are real, so I'm just saying. Are we? Oh, yeah. Things, things could be trouble. happening. That well, are beyond the pale, ma'am. Either way, it is getting near dark, and I think if we're going to survive the night, we should get. Excuse as me, my... oh, who uh, who put this lady in charge? Uh, I believe uh, <laughs> that men are talking. Oh, oh, oh all oh. right. <laughs> uh, can Fra uh, Frank go over and poke him in the gut? I pull out my, I, I take my gun and I, I. Don't try to do a cool trick because I can't do a cool trick. <laughs> and I just like check it. I put it back. And I just go I down. I just like do a cool trick with my. I flip my rifle and bite you in the <laughs> right in the gut. So at ah. this point, uh, Laura just kind of dead eyes. Bartholomew, mm -hmm. and then this she is a, this physically is, This is a fight turns, between my so my uh, Law of the West and my Highfalutin. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> she physically turns so that her back is to Bartholomew and looks at Frank and says, "It's getting near dark, and I think we should recover as much of our belongings as possible." I'm already walking away down the track so towards where we, the thing went. Sebia, a privy, I gesture at her to go in front of me and I've got my <laughs> rifle so the... she's coming with us if she was gonna be bossy okay. that's what I'm saying all right Laura goes with you bien <laughs> and I, yeah. I hobble behind la, oh the baby can stay here if you'd like no I wouldn't I'm... want anyone to hurt themselves on the dark trail <laughs> I'm sorry. Who who killed the who killed the boss man? Just gonna put that up there. <laughs> <laughs> you keep going, sweetie. <laughs> so Clem is gonna assist wherever he can, so he joins. So you're like the carrying yeah, you're all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I hop on Clem's back. So I follow you. Live down the track. <laughs> so Harold, being the senior living crew member decides to tag along oh. with you. So. so now there's no one in charge of the train. Harold the cook? We're going to come back it's going to be fucking Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> the rest boys. of the passengers are kind of milling about, still recovering from their own injuries and their own um, <laughs> shock. One of them, uh, the... The Mormon missionary decides that uh, it's probably a good idea to start a, a campfire. So he starts building a fire. You know, he he somehow managed to get a piece of the ghost rock and is using that to light the fire. And is uh, is uh, any one of the party here injured? I've got a gut wound. Yeah, I've got up till twelve. Or, oh, and I'm like twelve wind. Yeah. Clem's feeling just fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, because, I mean, it only takes a minute to lay on hands. I can't do it on myself, but I can do it on others. Okay. But can you only do it on one person? Why don't uh, we have a good old-fashioned tent revival here? Yeah. Uh, also, one here. of the children from the family of four brings out a conch shell. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the dear. only time they let other people talk is when they're only... <laughs> <laughs> So the blessed can never bring back the truly dead, or undead for that matter, once a person breathes last, blah, blah, blah. Blessed actually feel the victim's pain, so they must subtract the patient's total wound modifiers from their faith roll. What? So any wound modifiers? Which are? That's a good question, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dan. So 
how, how do we figure out what the wound modifiers are? Is it just how many oh, wounds it, they have? Yeah, so it essentially it's minus one for mild, minus two for uh, or sorry, light, heavy, serious, critical, maimed. Maimed is a minus five roll modifier. Light is a minus one roll modifier. Okay. So you're rolling so, at a minus three. Not, I can't heal myself. I have to heal. So what what level of injury do you have, Frank? Oh, level. Yeah. What? what? I have a one or a modifier or. Well, what? What? Light. What? So you have a light wound, so it's a modifier of one. Yes. And light is a difficulty of five. Um, well, that's gonna suck because I only have. Oh, no wait, faith I have two, so I roll two d six, right? So. Mm-hmm. So that's a, a four. <laughs> Oh, the bad news if the healer fails the roll, the patient isn't cured, and the healer takes on the same maladies or wounds. Oh, great. Oh, good job. <laughs> wow. If these are wounds, the blessed takes the victim's highest wound level to his own guts area. <laughs> Jesus. So you just died? I've got four guts. <laughs> What's the most that you can have? Five. Five. Okay. Ugh! You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I think All I need right. to heal first. Mm. Good thing nobody likes Bartholomew. <laughs> I didn't want to do this, but okay. <laughs> oh no. Just, just okay. <laughs> That's worrisome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bartholomew's so, done trying to heal. Like I, I okay. can't. I can't. I'm too. I'm too hurt to help others. I'm sorry. Let's get hobbling down the road some more. Mm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. So, all y'all, the four of you, plus Harold and Laura, are headed down the... I make uh, a rudimentary wheelchair out of parts from the train. <laughs> <laughs> two train wheels. <laughs> two and, train wheels and just a yeah. seat from the passenger car. <laughs> That's a fly-ass... Uh, uh, Weighs five hundred pounds and you're pushing make it sure down. Make sure we're tinkering for this. I make sure I make sure it's as wide as the train tracks, so they can just push me down the train tracks. All right. <laughs> as you make your way down the mountain, you get a slow building of dread. I had that back of the train. You come around. The trees seem darker and denser, as if the sun is. Sl- dwindling faster than you had expected. As you come around the corner, you see the boxcar and the caboose uh, still on the... uh, having jumped the tracks at the bottom of the hill at a sharp curve. They lie upended in the embankment just above a small stream. Uh, Clem takes out, because this is in my item list, I take out or uh, Clem takes out his tobacco pouch and roll, rolls a little cigarette as we contemplate. <laughs> it wouldn't happen to be marijuana for a certain person's pain, would it be? <laughs> I take out my whip. Okay. I don't believe you have the strength to use the whip. Didn't say I'm using it. <laughs> what are you doing with I'm it? I'm holding it. I don't know how to use the lip to begin with, oh so... <laughs> Clem in another Union Army medical situation uh, turns to Bartholomew. Here, here's another trick we did in the war. Oh, no. Blows a puff of smoke right in his face and then pours another sip of the good stuff. stuff <laughs> <laughs> <It's just laughs> I kind of ship the two of them. <laughs> well, why don't everybody don't... give me a... I don't smoke, sir. <laughs> well, you do now. I'll give you a what? Guts check. Which well, is... I've got four wounds in my guts. I can just show you them, I think. Do you have guts? <laughs> I think I have what a... What does a guts check fall under? Guts. Uh, guts. So, okay. It's under spirit. Oh, sweet. Spirit. So, 
I have I one have D ten, but I have a three on guts. What does that does that allow D10. me three more rolls? No, you get to roll three D ten when you roll. I get it. What was it when I have zero? Just a minus sixty four, right? Four. Yeah. That... So that's a minus two. Okay, so I have a... <laughs> so I have minus three brave, um, which means I have oh, a plus two to my guts check, and I don't have anything in guts other than that. So do I just? I roll 2d6, because I have plus 2 to guts. Yep, you roll... Wait, what's your... What's your base? It's 1d6? No, with without the modifier, I have nothing. Yep. Okay, so you still roll 1d6. Okay. And then two more? So three? What? You just add two to it, don't you? Yes. Uh, so I roll Wait, two, what? roll 1d6 and add two to the number... Yes. Okay. Oh, seven. Now, are you wounded? Yes. In my guts. By how much? One. One. So six. Mm, yes. <gasps> yes. Okay. Yes. I'm okay. so fucking confused. You're fine. <laughs> uh, so I rolled a nine, and I do have a sprained left ankle. <laughs> I don't remember what happened to my guts that hurt. So, I think it was my shoulder. You're fine. So did anybody get less than a five? Me. Uh, I got a negative two. I got a negative three. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's supposed to be hard. It We're in the weird kind of wild west. Uh, it's yeah, punishing is more apt. It's not for e. So I need um uh, ba 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 Ari and Dan to roll two D six. Um I'm worried already. That would be from I'm rolling my Colin. little mini die from nerdychicken.ca. <laughs> oh. I just got double sixes, bruh. Okay. They, they so stack, and that's how... Both. Is that an ace? Do I get to roll again? I think you died. Two aces? No, no, I you don't think you one. want to roll again. Oh, Twelve wow. is no, five. No, you're fucked. <laughs> oh, was that damage? Yeah, I got nine. Yeah, our, Ari, what is that? Uh, nine. Nine. Okay. So, Ari, you you have a little bit of the willies being around this silent, kind of morose situation. Um, situation. You, you kind of stagger back in horror, uh, and you take one wind, uh, and your actions are at minus two. Wait, did we get rid of wind? No. Did we get rid of anything? I think wind went away, didn't it? Your wind will, after this scene, your wind will go away. So you just take an extra wind on top of whatever. Okay. So what you're saying is this is going to be a wind go? Wah, wah. Well, if you don't get the passengers out and they start eating each other, I'm not responsible for what the rules tell me happens. Donner, 40 of 40. Donner, 40 and 40. Yep. And Dan, you... Poor Bartholomew. You take five wind. And all your... You, you have the heebie-jeebies. <coughs> I don't... But, I mean, I'm afraid that there's going to be something that comes out and eats my organs because they kind of visible. I'm not <laughs> sure this is a safe place for any of us uh, to be. <laughs> uh, Clem says, here, girlfriend, this is what we did to calm our nerves in the war. <laughs> he pours another sip of the good stuff. <laughs> <now. laughs> I'm going to start And charging. another pop of smoke in his face. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of cure-all. 
<laughs> you know, I know, so... I know. Maybe you and I should go into business together. It ain't no snake oil trick, if that's what you mean. Are you sure? I don't know, man. I take <laughs> exception to that, sir. All right. Maybe it's just his aff affectation. Sorry, well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you guys just gonna sit nice. there and be terrified and drink, or no? I'm just gonna keep walking. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really trudging. I'm curing Bartholomew here, <laughs> I'm, and I'm staying with the group because I ain't no food. I'm just rubbing my arms and looking around, scared. I've won that role. I'm not affected, right? I'm not right. even. I haven't even really been paying attention to what's around me because my guts hurts. <laughs> now you know how girls feel. <laughs> Bartholomew's just gonna slowly turn into a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. I'm not going to, but I could. All right. So you guys are around the uh, caboose and baggage car. They're they've knocked off the rails. It's eerily silent. It's kind of dark. Uh, I'm looking for my suit. You're looking for your suit, yeah, so you're going to go approach the car. Perhaps I, I, I urge Clem in front <laughs> to uh, explore the baggage car. Perhaps I should <laughs> yeah. make a fire. Uh, through that nudging, Clem that might be a good idea. Is... I'm going to start making a fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> While they look I around. Just Oh, this is creepy as shit. Start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. I'm like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, bad. so Clem is in the baggage car. Uh, with and I'm right behind him. Okay. okay. Basically, like I'm, I'm like kind of holding onto his coattails at this juncture. All right. And a winter coat. Everyone laughed at me. You all laughed at me for having a winter coat. I don't remember. <laughs> We're that. going to the desert, you said. Maybe it's just Dan. <laughs> it's probably just your people back home. Maybe we'll do. Uh, Jeff, real yes. quick before we take one more step within this cart, I did pour that uh, snake oil on the pin. Do I have any more in the bottle? Uh, sure. Why not? Just a splash. I'm okay. Yeah. With splash. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Yep. I'm going to make a cognition roll. I want to know what direction we're walking. Okay. Because <laughs> that's something Get I can the do. Cart? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because I can. I don't have a lot of abilities. Well, I mean, you could do a search or. Four. I... <laughs> no, I'm not good at searching. I'm good at finding direction. I, uh, I'm clueless, like so if I am lo if I'm trying to notice things, I take a negative two to the check. <laughs> oh, what, what did you roll? Uh, four. Do I know what direction we're going? Yeah, you're going north. <laughs> I knew it. All millennials are like the fuck. Sweet. The <laughs> we don't know what that means. Salt Lake, Salt Lake, Salt Salt Lake is always south. Always. We're, we're traveling west. Always. Even if you're in Arizona, it's always south. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Is this are, an Arizonian you... thing? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Are, are you doing anything, Clem? Are you just... Yeah, Clem lit I, I whispered to Clem, we're walking north. <laughs> you, you You're lit... giving him too much liquor. You lit a match in the darkness. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not gonna... I'm not Two gonna... matches. <laughs> Let's see. I need a D8. Hmm. Three. Eight. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then a D2. Okay, Clem, roll a, um, oh, deafness. Uh, deafness. Okay. Uh, good thing I have four rolls, because I rolled a one and a two so far. <laughs> uh, seven. Seven. Okay. So, as soon as you light the match, you hear 
the unmistakable click of oh, man. a Colt Army revolver, and suddenly a gunshot rings out through the night and blows out the side of the boxcar behind you. In in the darkness, you see a 15-year-old kid hunted. Hun- Hunkered oh, um, <laughs> under one of the lag- luggage racks, holding said revolver, but he's shaking it all over the place. He do I recognize him? Uh, yeah, yeah, you do. So Horace, before is that Horace? Are you? What are you doing here? So this poor kid has seen some shit. And he is effectively mute. I would go over to him. I hobble Clem over jumps to in, him. Eat oil, you fiend. No, and I, throws I, the rest of the snake oil in his eyes. I push, I'll roll I push, for that. I push Clem out of the way first. I will roll deftness against his challenging it. What, is, what would that be for me? Strength? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's 2d4. <laughs> Strength check? Okay. <laughs> We'll say toughness five, so, you know. Uh, Are you on strength? Four. Hold on. Uh, (laughs) Thirteen. So, yeah, you, like, smack Bart over the head. He falls unconscious, and then the bottle keeps going. (laughs) Oh, Dan's out of booze on that one. (laughs) <laughs> towards towards uh, unbeknownst to Clem, his cousin's face. Yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to blind the sorry sod that <laughs> shot it. I, I yell at Clem like, "That is my cousin Horace." As the sugar water, which is, by the way, the prop of the game at this point, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. the what? It's Horace. The sugar water. Sugar water. <laughs> Yeah, it hits Horace's eyes. He lets out a blood curdling screech oh, and no. fires again, this time just as erratically straight up through the roof, <laughs> sending pieces of uh, you know, wooden boxcar kind of raining down. So you over. guys are outside here, yeah, gunshots, yeah. by the way. I assume Allie and I run for the yeah. entrance. I. So I get up and I go to like basically human shield Horus. Because oh. I know shit's about to go down because everyone around me is an idiot. Hey, including you and Horus. <laughs> everyone Look, around me, including high you. Highfalutin, okay? A highfalutin idiot, fine. <laughs> so what do I need to do to, 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 to do that? Do I just do that? Yeah, you, you, you're just doing it. You're just okay. in front of him. Yeah, this stills Clem's rash, well, but on point hand. Frank can't see anything because the whole car is full of gun smoke. So she just levels her <laughs> rifle, but doesn't like aim or anything. I just keep yelling, it's my cousin! It's my cousin Horace! I don't know why he's here, but he's here. It's my kin! <laughs> my kin! <laughs> What is she talking about? Horace just... Horace is clearly rattled and frazzled beyond um, beyond speech, beyond oh, yeah, sight. Like His eyes are somewhere else. I look, I look for my luggage, and I get, <laughs> I get my nice suit out, and I put my suit jacket around Horace. Aww. 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 Meanwhile, Laura has busted in and at the gunfire and is looking around feverishly. She's nervous about something clearly unsettled herself. Not and, all the shooting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, somebody give me a cognition check. Hell yeah! I'm busy, so even though I do have 3d6 in that. Wait, I, I guess about he's that my to new give Laura some of the good stuff too. Oh, that's God. not uh, an innuendo. Are you sure? <laughs> I have three. In your endo. I got a six. Six? 
Oh, hold on. A uh, 15. Oh, Ooh. wow. Look at, look at Clem. Aced it again. <laughs> I'm really feeling like a Travis of the Adventure Zone right now. <laughs> I swear I'm rolling true. <laughs> so... You're rolling off a lot of 18s there, Magnus. <laughs> yeah. So, Clem. I was like Clint. I don't know, it's just a me oh, talking like uh, with mouth words. Mouth words. So, Clem, you notice um, that uh, Laura actually grabs two bags. So she, om- she grabs one, opens it, lets out a sigh of relief, closes it, and then grabs the second bag before turning and glancing towards the back Mm -hmm. of the baggage car and then leaving. She's either got drugs or money, but I don't really care. Uh, gang, I don't don't mean to interrupt our reunion with uh, Bartholomew's blind cousin. No (laughs) relation. Uh, but, uh, wait, 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 out. Clem grabs his pack and steps out as well. All right. All right. <laughs> Front grabs however much food she can. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, as you uh, leave, you slip on something. Uh-oh. Is it poop? I can slip on anything. I trip over, like, pebbles. No. Out there, I have my rifle now. Um, oh, yeah, down. and I have, I have, I think I had all my guns, though. So. Wait, do you have, still have my rifle, you son of a bitch? No, I gave it back now. Good. Oh, just now? <laughs> uh, here, Frank. <laughs> this, this might have been yours. Messy. So, are we gonna go after, so, after that? Frank, do you have oh. tracking? Uh, oh, yes, we, I have 4010, I was going to say, you got, probably got pretty high in tracking. 4010? 4010. Why don't you, uh, why don't you roll tracking? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, while she's tracking, I say a poem. Oh, God. Uh, that's a six for poetry. Um, I think that was an ace. Don't you get to roll it again? Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's a nine. Nine for poetry. Why are we recording poetry? Nine for poetry. Ooh. You tell a pretty good poem. It's not, you know, I'm trying it's to use it to calm horse, the, then. It's not the bard, but everybody seems a little more chill, given, you know, almost being shot. and. It was Mimsy. <laughs> the toes. toes. Did Geyer and Gimble in the wave. All Mimsy yeah. with the Boracos. And the Moam Rats so, uh, so I got a 16. What did you get? I you got a 16. Oh, yeah, 16. Hot, hot damn. Mm-hmm. You, being the expert tra- trapper that you are, I would your, your thorough investigation around the area around the caboose and the uh, <laughs> baggage car shows that... I like checking well, out a good caboose. What can I say? It appears that um, somebody wearing boots was dragged away towards the tree line. But it looks like whoever was dragging them was wearing stilts. I believe what we are running into here is the Mothman. I mean, does does Frank explain this to uh, us? Sure. Uh, Pardon. Uh, there are bizarre tracks leading to the tree line. Have you? 
Bien. <laughs> Bien. Bien. I forget. Bold apathy. <laughs> yeah, that works in this scenario. Ah, uh, there. Uh, a person wearing boots. Boots, you know this word? <laughs> <laughs> I believe I've heard it once or Being twice. Being dragged by a person on, uh, how you say, stilts? You know this word? <laughs> I've seen this in the war. In the war? <laughs> Someone's been carried off by carnival folk again. <laughs> oh, good lord. It's the stilt people of Deseret. <laughs> <laughs> got to go stop the carnies from <laughs> doing whatever. The thing is that they're just normal point. height. They're just all little people <laughs> on stilts to be about five and a half feet tall. <laughs> wow, we are going to hell. <laughs> Harold stands back and scratches his jaw and goes, I hate clowns for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> you, you read it as well? <laughs> Out of real I love real things. I read it and that and this here and that there. Anything else? You guys gonna search around, search the caboose? Oh, Allie did slip on something in the baggage car, didn't yeah. she? Ooh, what did I it's blood. Was it it's gross? blood. Probably. It was blood. Ugh. Okay. I think you should it's, fall down. And how is how is Horace doing? No, oh, he's he's still pretty shocked. Wait, is he is he the cook? <clears throat> Who? Hor Horace is the cousin. Harold is the cook. Laura's the uh... rich bitch oh, who okay. just left us. Let, let me get my H names right. Here, cause she the... left us. <laughs> she left us. Uh, how is Harold holding holding up? I mean, I know he's talked about reading this and that, but. <laughs> he, he's he's nervous. He's a little antsy. Um, he's definitely unsettled by the lack of people noises. Like you guys are the only ones apparently making sounds. And when he sees the blood in the baggage car, he's definitely uh, more resolute. But his his eyes are definitely more worried. You know he. He's fine, but he's definitely unsettled. May I make a, a, a meta suggestion to Clem? Wasn't he interested yeah. in that crate? Is it still there? Uh, he was more interested in trying to kind of do the right thing and just help a gentleman out. It, it, it didn't have to do with any suspicion. Clem is a simple man. <laughs> uh, but... I. Uh, out of game, I have been thinking of the crate, uh, but I wanted to do, and I don't know what necessarily falls under, maybe a surgeon, uh, to see if the blood is related to the boot trail uh, of the person being carried away. Yeah, sure. Give a search and roll. Okay. You guys are so loud when you come in and out that dog door. Uh, 17. Ooh. So, Dang, did you roll another ace? Yeah, I did ace. <laughs> okay, Travis, so, we don't trust you anymore. You, you need a webcam going to show your dice. <laughs> well, it was a 1 and then a 12, so. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me set up. Uh, what is it? Um, roll the, 20? Yeah, or the other one. Evan something. I don't remember. I'm not going to do video me. over all of that. I bought these sweet metal dice for a reason. Nice. Oh, the metal dice. I have a set of those. I love them. Yeah. I want a set of metal dice. I got them for anyway. my birthday. Anyway. Uh, Clem being detective du jour uh, can clearly, you know, he goes in and you have your, your match because you still haven't found a lantern, you poor dumb son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you can see there's blood. There is a lot of blood. And um, the crate inside the baggage car is destroyed. It's just uh -oh. gone. 
there's no bodies anywhere. All that's left of the crew that was in the back of the, the train is this blood. And it definitely um, does not leave. The, the tracks, kind of, you know, there's a little bit of blood around the small stilts-like tracks, but then even that disappears. So the blood is pretty much located to just the baggage car. Okay, so with that, and this may seem gruesome to some, but is important to a paranormal investigator, if you will, uh, <laughs> are there any pieces, or is it just blood? Like, any people pieces, or, like, what I'm getting at is, have the people parts been carried off? Yeah. <laughs> the are there any gibbs lying around? It, if somebody had eaten the bodies they ate it all they just didn't lick the plate clean it's like so, eating a tomato you don't lick the juice up that'd be gross you're right that's weird <laughs> i'm cooth if you would <laughs> uh, uh, but, i would yeah. say back back on the farm we did not eat the blood that's built on the floor nor the tomato juice <laughs> uh so Clem, i am not a vampire uh, runs back to the rest of the group uh well the uh, crate Mr. Seabirth was so gingerly caring for is busted wide open, and I feel like I have a bit of an affectation of uh, Bartholomew right now, but that's just because I've traveled this land so far. Uh, there is also a, an awful large amount of blood, but no people parts, as if something had gulped them down as if they were a tomato. <laughs> Without licking up the juice, because that would be um. <laughs> <laughs> you killed Dan. Just <laughs> <laughs> glad we get back who... on the family farm. <laughs> For those of you who can't see what's happening right now, Clem has basically killed Bart and everybody else with his one-liner <laughs> about tomatoes. I mean. <laughs> In, in my defense, I am probably uh, uh, four glasses in on my scotch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really Bourbon is the secret ingredient. <laughs> so, so. So, uh, uh, so what you're saying is it's not worth the effort uh, to uh, search that down, or do you think maybe perhaps they just stopped bleeding and they're still tracks leading off into the nowhere who do you think that was it was it mr seaman or whatever his name was uh or mr seabirth is for uh, mr seabreeze <laughs> mr seabirth is uh hopefully not one of them counting as a blood donor on that pool <laughs> in the car but we we should continue on these tracks. There may be only one line of boots, but if I can save anybody from a carny spate, that's what Wait. Sir Clemens will do. Well, but then, spate? yeah, because it's circus stuff. Uh, the question uh, here is: is uh, Do you believe? Would, do you think that we'd be able to do it in under one day? Because we do need to get these rations back to the train. Or else they will eat each other and uh, turn into Wendigos. Look. Leather, I, I've seen this in the war. Leather is a decent substitute for one day's minus of rations. Do you believe that the folks on that there train, these common folks, these people of the earth, would be eating leather? Well, I did see a child holding a conch. He could have been the one left to charge. We should get these rations. <laughs> Clem, that's his weakness, is uh, uh, obligation. So he sees freaking Bartholomew's point and believes in getting the rations back to the fucking Lord of the Flies trailer. <laughs> Thanks for listening to episode 2 of Of Dice and Den Presents A Fistful of Dice. 
These guys are a hoot, aren't they? I really like how they take the story in a direction completely different than what I was expecting. You know, these canned campaigns have a pretty formalized flow to them, but these guys do a really good job of breaking us out of our mold, forcing me to think about different ways to respond to their actions and really grow the source material. If you haven't had a chance to check out some of the other Stolen Dress podcasts, check out Hosts with Their Own Picard, Episode 3 just dropped, and you can listen to Dan and Jay discuss the New York Comic Con Picard trailer and generally fangirl out about Star Trek. Check them out and some of the other shows over at StolenDress.com. OD&D Presents is a production of Stolen Dress Entertainment. Visit them at StolenDress.com to find out more about their other amazing podcasts. You can contact OD&D by going to our webpage, ODNDpodcast.com, where you can find a link to our merch shop, or just go ahead and go to shop.ODNDpodcast.com. We can be found on Twitter at ODNDpod and Facebook at ODND Podcast. You can send us an email at ODNDpod at gmail.com. Theme music for a fistful of dice is by Audionautics and is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution License. Deadlands The Weird West is a creation of Shane Lacey Hensley and published by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Of Dice and Dens is a proud supporter of Fuck Cancer, Roll Dice. Fuck Cancer, Roll Dice is a yearly streaming event dedicated to fundraising for the fight against cancer. This year's event will feature numerous tabletop games, from D&D to Call of Cthulhu and a wonderfully wide cast of hosts and players. Streams will run over the course of three days, from November 22nd to November 24th, and we would be delighted if you would join us at twitch.tv slash coach underscore Zach that's twitch.tv slash coach underscore Z-A-C. All proceeds from the event will go directly to Fuck Cancer, an organization dedicated to uniting the community in an effort to prevent, detect, and defeat cancer. They work hard to build support networks for those who have been diagnosed and to assist in detecting cancer before it's too late. You can find more information about Fuck Cancer on their website at letsfcancer.com. All donations will be handled via Tiltify, so you can be certain where your money is going. So if you're a fan of tabletop games or even new to the community, we welcome you with open arms. Join us the weekend of November 22nd where we say, fuck cancer, roll dice. Would it behoove us for me to follow the tracks and wait for you to return? I believe, uh, I I, last, when I was raised, I have a uh, 3D10 in knowledge. And I will tell you, uh, one should never split the party. Uh, what about when you have a scout? Then uh, you should leave them behind without someone who can uh, hear whether or not they scream in agony and or pain. And at that point you are splitting the party. <laughs> Damn whatever god split us this w- in our decisions this way. <laughs> uh, Frank, uh, do you do you have survival? It is under It's under smarts. Smarts. Uh we uh, survival 3D8 that's what? In yeah. mountains or? I did not put anything. <laughs> so yes. Probably forest. <laughs> Everything. Whatever it needs to be <laughs> is what she has. <laughs> okay. Roll. Give me a survival check then. Thirteen. Ooh. So you just instinctively know that um, staying around this boxcar 
and the area around it for much longer is probably a bad idea and if you decide to stay the night here you have greater than average likelihood of dying uh, I, I think I will come with you. <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm glad that you could uh, uh, see sense, young lady. Monsieur, Monsieur Clem, may I have some of your army fortitude? <laughs> <laughs> uh, certainly, Sham Appel. And he blows a whip of... He, he relights... It hasn't been smoked down all the way. He relights his uh, little rolled cigarette right in front space and then gives her a sip of the good stuff. Messy. I dig around in my bag and like pull out a little flask and take a sip of my... Oh. Uh, that's not sugar water. I would, God before knows. we depart, Fermented I would sugar. like to use brown gin okay. uh, to try to get any... Uh, basically to try to get the most rations we can out of this. Alright. Roll. I want to drive the train. Well, I okay. I I've got a two in driving. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scrounge in a 14. Ooh, what, you twice. are such a cheater. <laughs> no, I swear. I, my first roll was a one. Every time I'm like, this looks bad. So, do you know what MREs are? Yes. Uh, feels ready to eat? No, yes. I haven't heard of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, you work for the federal government. I know you know what they are. <laughs> um, you found a crate full of the Civil War version of them, so <laughs> it's hard pretty sure that uh, hard tack. Yeah, right, dirty. hard tack. I'm pretty sure that guy uh, with that YouTube channel is probably eating it. Yeah. Yeah. And salted pork. Yep. Mm. Salted pork. An entire salted pig. Hardtack. And two bottles of whiskey. Okay, oh, I actually and... like hardtack. What is hardtack? It's non leavened bread that can, they dry it and then um, it can last a lot longer. It's like lemon bread, it's like not magic. Like lemon... No, yeah. it's just power, kids. I like hardtack. I try. I've tried it at like a. Uh, what's it called? The place in that the pioneer place. or George? No. Williamsburg. Uh, or... Williamsburg. It was like that in the south. It was like a old timey, uh, mm. like Town? wherever. No, it was a fort, like fort, oh. the old forts and stuff. We're just gonna call it Fort Dix. But it tasted like communion wafers, <laughs> so I oh. liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had lots of those. Yes. <laughs> Which is also what I uh, thought, like, manna would taste like. Because <laughs> it's church. Manna, I mean, communion wafers. Really so, so when you drink them on a potion, it tastes taste like... like... Blue Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> but right? we're getting off track. <laughs> Health potion is red Gatorade, and mana is blue Gatorade. <laughs> and stamina potion is green Gatorade. Yes. It's probably true. <laughs> So, I, I go with you. Laura's starting to look kind of antsy now, too. Like, she, and she's saying, because the sun is about two fingers above the horizon, probably just about enough time to walk back uphill to the train wreck. I thought that it was already sunset. <laughs> That's why I built a fire. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good Fire it was. It's, we were in the woods. It was probably still dark there. Okay. Yeah. It felt unnaturally, or it feels unnaturally dark okay. around the uh, boxcar and caboose, but um, you can still see the sun is about two fingers above the horizon. Probably just about enough time for you to. Yeah, that finger. Um, <laughs> just about enough time for you guys to get back to the train wreck before nighttime sets in. Uh, Clem offers to carry one of Laura's bags being oh. the gentleman he is. Everybody assumes he's trying to get in someone's uh... What's, what's the old-timey term for panties? <laughs> Pantaloons? <laughs> Pantaloons? Yeah, Leavers. everybody assumes Leavers. Clem's trying to get in someone's pantaloons. But he's chivalrous, damn it. He offers... Uh, Miss Laura, I see you're struggling with those two bags, and seeing how it is just 
two fingers before sunset, I did yeah, not carry yeah. one of those for you. <laughs> uh, roll a bluff chat. Two fingers before sunset, is that what they're calling it? I mean, he's days? an honest man, but I'll, or, I'll bluff the shit out of this. Or, or actually, <laughs> do, uh, uh, like, over awe or leadership. Oh, there Sorry. you go. Yeah, we're leading uh, to your two about, fingers. Could I persuade you into persuasion? Oh, yes. yes. You can do persuade. That works. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seven. Or what? They're fun. They're so she doesn't want to give it to you. She's doing everything in her power not to give you one of the bags. But <laughs> eventually she holds one out and right as you take it she's you know in those sitcoms where you hold on to it and she holds on to it and it's a little, little tug of war and then finally she lets go and he falls that... on his butt so i also i also want to offer to carry her other bag oh dear oh, uh boy. i'm i i consider since she's rich i consider her on my level so my high flutin does not impact my persuasion role but my Purdy adds a plus two. His Purdy. Uh, what was it again? Persuasion? Where's that at? Yeah, Persuasion. I picture you as Chris Hemsworth. I don't know why. <laughs> what was what was Persuasion under? Chris Hemsworth is a old timey gentleman. Mean, I yes, think. Please. Oh, mean, yeah. I will. So I've got that three d six <laughs> in that. All right. It's an eight. No. no. She, she looks at you and is She's like, no. Mama, I I've believe got... I can help you as well as this uh, this uh, brusque, uh, kind of heavily scented man. She just dead eyes you and shakes her head and starts walking off back towards the train wreck. Hand, white knuckle grip Wait, on her back. And towards the actual train, not the... Yeah, yeah, that would be a bad idea. Uh, the train how wreck that how was heavy is this bag? <laughs> um, is it is, like, I guess what hey. I'm asking, is it surprisingly heavy? Like, when I grab it? Right so over. it's not... It's not... Um, unnaturally heavy. It, it feels like it has... You know stuff in it like a um, regular check bag as if you were going to the airport or something like that like, so 50 pounds I want to scrutinize this over the way she's reacted okay and that is a knife so are you actually like going off to the side and opening it where she can't see you or <laughs> that would be a uh, rather ungentlemanly of Clem who by far is a gentleman despite what everybody's reaction to his actions have been he kind of fondles the bag <laughs> okay. well, sound like a gentleman you fondle it over <laughs> top of it shut your mouth for calling you <laughs> <laughs> Shut your dirty mouth. It, it feels like it's full of clothing. Uh, there's something solid about it, um, but it feels like it's just clothing. Well, that's good enough for Clem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything else? You want to check out the caboose? You want to... No, but I'm taking my I cousin we back to the main camp. Already. All right. Oh, there's some caboose checking Wait, going on. I got is Laura walking in front? That is the question. The fucking Lord of the Flies trailer. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Mark? Uh, what, what, what was oh. the extra rations I brought forth? Two crates uh, of uh, two crates of hard tech. And I was just wondering Clem if, if Laura down right yeah. now, but it's worth it. If, if, <laughs> and, if Laura is in front, we're definitely doing some caboose checking. Okay, okay. It's I mean it's the 1870s. She's got the nice bustle. <laughs> um, is she is she like walking like with that little wiggle? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, no, like... actually, there's something distinctly utilitarian in how she walks. She's a man. <laughs> 
Beautiful, beautiful man. A beautiful, beautiful man. All right. I guess I am going to time purposes, on. Clem's just bringing all this all right. hard tech and Laura's bag back to the... Unless something happens, this is that's his path in life. <laughs> all right. Frank takes one more look at the tree line and then turns and follows. Allie? We got all our stuff? Alright, let's go. Alright. <laughs> we got my bag, we got food, and I think we're pretty much set. The ladies are bringing up the room. Got my cousin. I, I do want to do something before we actually reach the train, but we'll continue on for now. Okay, well. So this, right? this ends, thus endeth the chapter. Mm. So as I'm going through the bounty here... Uh, Frank, you get uh, two white chips. Uh, Clem, you get. Can we take them from the bag? Yes. Okay. Yes. Clem, you get two white chips. Hold up. Uh, let's see. You guys are so very helpful to the uh, the other people at the train. <clears throat> Not. You don't get <laughs> points for that. Hey, they didn't you, help us. There. <laughs> you did defeat the bandits, so you yeah. all get a red chip. Woo! So I'm capped out at ten. Does that? Uh, so I would, I would turn some of your chips into bounty points, okay. so okay. you can increase some of your stats. Can we do uh, that one You can do it right now. I don't care. What is the... Yeah, how does that work? Because yeah. I don't want to do that. So, bounty points, it's one for a white chip, two for a red chip, three for a blue chip. And then uh, there's a section on leveling that I briefly skimmed, but would need to uh, read deeper to be able to speak yeah, so authoritatively on it. So let's hold off on the, the bounty points for now. Let's let Jeff dig into it. Yeah, yeah. But we can them. change them over. I guess. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't do it until you know exactly what you're getting for them. Yeah, it's like... So, to go from... Uh, I don't think you can change the dice type, but you can change the number of dice. Mm -hmm. So, you... And it's the, the bounty points are the num... Uh, so to go from like three to four D eight, you spend four bounty points, and to go from four to five is five bounty points. Okay, so just basically the the number that you want to be at is how many you spend. Yes, but I'll, so, I'll dig. I'll yeah, dig, dig into that a little bit. So I think yeah. I might want to up my faith because <laughs> it be didn't handy. seem very useful at the moment. Uh, I need a higher chance of getting an ace, I think, to succeed at pretty much any of this. Well, and I'd like, you know, take a minute to kind of get used to f figure out what my strengths are, where, where I'm, like, really, like, sucking. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm pretty much everywhere. I'm good at poetry, apparently, so... <laughs> my... So my strategic advice, if you will, is if you're getting close to capping out your number of di uh, chips is translate your white chips into bounty points because one white is very prolific they equal one bounty point um, but also red and blues are much more valuable um, like when you get wounded you can spend a blue chip and ignore up to I think it's like three wounds or something like that okay. So, I know where all of Bartholomew's are going. So if have you convert them to bounty points, do you have to spend those bounty points right away, or can you bank those? You can bank them. Okay. See, there you go. Well, there you go. Um, were you done giving out chips? We yes. kind of derailed you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have ten, so I can stay with that. God damn, how did you get all those reds? This sucks. I'm all I've all white chips <laughs> and one red. I was okay. gonna say, I just gave everyone a red chip. I know. I have one red. 
And it's only because you actively gave me a red chip, not because I chose it. <laughs> All right, back on the trail. Let's do this. Is, is that the thing you wanted to do before we got back to camp, or did? Is there <laughs> well, it's like I have an in-story thing I want to do. All right, well, just... let's let's hear it. As he comes um, back, but no, no, <laughs> pants. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, as the uh, let's see, diner cart comes into view, I lean over to Alice uh, and say, "Well, uh, so you know this ain't my forte, but there does still seem to be something fishy about this bag. Do you mind, Alice? I I don't mean to sound." crass but of one with lesser morals than of someone as myself do you mind taking a look in this bag and seeing just what the hell is going on now what are you saying about my morals <laughs> please alice i, I cannot <laughs> look in this bag myself but someone who might not find the social uh, uh Alice, I'm a man of my word. Please look at this. <laughs> Frank come, is walking behind, oh. so she comes up. What? Kiss, kiss, bus. What is happening? Oh, nothing. Is that this, your this, middle this, name, Shamapel? This upstanding gentleman wants me to look in this woman's bag. Oh. I would do it. <laughs> I didn't say I wouldn't do it. Oh. I'm just saying. Oh. <clears throat> Perhaps. Tell you what, Alice, anything you find of value, I'll turn a blind eye to and it's yours. All I right. do not like making these sorts of deals, but I cannot look in this bag myself. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Is there like a lock on it? No, no, it's just a bag. And the Clem and, closes and, his eyes and looks away. And then, um, and Lawrence. Frank looks under Ali, er, off and away, out of sight. Yeah, she's up the trail. All yeah, right. We're all walking behind her, watching her. Fox looking remember? over your shoulder. I bend over to tie my shoe and uh, pop open the case. Ooh. Frank, are you right there with her? Or... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Clem says loudly, Whoops, I dropped this bag that fell open. And <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Stealth is back, because I'm strong suit, suit apparently. Strong suit? Strong suit. Oh, Bart. That's all the whiskey that he's put down my throat. Strong, strong suit. Ooh. So, inside, you find... Pantaloons. I grab some of the, the silk underwear. Ooh, these are French. Except, <laughs> except it's a uh, men's... Um, it's filled with men's clothing tailored probably for somebody about Mr. Seaberth's size, you Ooh. would imagine. Um, These are French and for men. <laughs> let's see. And a black leather trench coat. Ooh. How, how, how much further are you going to dig? Like, are you going to basically dump it all out <laughs> no i'm just gonna kind of yeah okay at it. this point clem hears these are not nice for men and go what wait this ain't the lady suitcase and just tips it full on <laughs> <laughs> rule all bets are off now <laughs> yeah. he, I, he is a man of his word as long as she is mm -hmm. a woman of her word <laughs> Just exactly. because she has men's clothes doesn't mean she's got a dingle. <laughs> but except they're not cut to her the... frame, I think, is what oh, okay. the implication is here. <laughs> it's more that she's Clem's so bad. viewing these is not, this is not her bag at this yes. point. Okay, what do we see? Jeff looks displeased. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, are you? Are you... He flipped the table. Yeah. Yeah. You... Fucking... Okay. He jumped it. Uh, inside, you also find a what well, appears to be a disguise list. <laughs> or not disguise list, a disguise kit. Oh, okay. 
And... <laughs> These are all the disguises I do. <laughs> Colonel <Rodeo> Sanders. <laughs> guy who checks on Crate. Thor. <laughs> and Little Devil. A, Little what Debbie. looks like an official federal badge. Oh, Frank drops that one. <laughs> for um, the... Well, roll a... Pinkertons? <laughs> roll a general knowledge. Uh, general knowledge? <laughs> Ooh, I can do that. 3D10. D10. <clears throat> Uh, five. Oh, four. Uh, two. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to did be sneaky. Get ab- what? Did anybody get above a five? I got a five. Yeah. Like, on a five. No. Okay. Can I have, like, backed up and been like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Horace and Laura are just all by themselves. And then I look at that thing that they're holding. So you... Uh, that's a six. A six. So you, uh, in addition to the black duster, uh, the badge you realize is for the um, United States Special Agency. Why do y'all have a badge for the United States Special Agency? This is Laura. Laura's bag. That is definitely not Laura's bag. This ain't Laura's bag. That's I, why I tip. Although I would down. not mind seeing her I, in that trench coat. Uh, the the special <laughs> services agency. Sorry. Frank Frank did air quotes. Uh, Clem. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, y'all, she said this is uh, her bag. Is she Did she overtly like tell you it was her bag? No, damn it. She just grabbed some bags from the cart. So it's, it's reasonable that maybe she made a mistake, yeah? They look like a matching set. I know there's companies that make suitcases of the same type, but I just assumed her being a lady, she wanted a matching set. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, maybe she does. Maybe her suitcase is still back in the baggage car. We should go ask her. I go ask no. Laura. <laughs> we grab him again. <laughs> so would you like to hear what else is in the pile of stuff that oh, you don't know? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> okay. A gold pocket watch. Oh, I have one of those. Me too. Uh, <laughs> engraved with... Um, Seabirth's initials. Oh, oh, no. This is not Laura's bag. Um, <laughs> she made a mistake. And a uh, a box of forty four caliber uh, shells and a Gatling pistol. Oh, interesting. Clem so goes. Uh, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> that settles it. This is. Not of Laura's FX, and he starts to <laughs> shove everything back in the bag. <laughs> He's not going to steal, but he just wanted a bit of a confirmation there. Uh, you I don't prom- know if anybody's going to. You promised uh, the gold watch to Ali? I'll take that gold watch. <laughs> Do I have a gold watch? You no, have- I don't. Well, I got to go back. I'm like, we need to let her know this is not her suitcase. She is <laughs> missing. Some clothes or some such, and as a person who is very invested in his suit to go visit his father's friend in Deseret, I do want to let her know that her clothing is not here. Uh, but... You can go ahead, but I saw nothing. <laughs> Bartholomew, uh, that yes. may not be the wisest, and also damn you, Frank, for catching me between my morals. I, I am a man of my word, and I will turn a blind <laughs> eye to what Alice finds in this bag, not Did you, Fred. I, like, I respect... I have a finger on this bag's possession. I have a respect You for... will forgive my affectation. <laughs> I, I, I have an honorable... honorable bone in my body, and I feel like we should let her know ah. before we get too close... 
I believe that the bone you are following is the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> so I go up to Laura and let's say oh, physically please. restrain me. Wait, I think we should do a strength check. <laughs> uh, straight up strength on him. Yeah. Clem does it. He doesn't like it, but he does it. So it's a challenge against each other. So yeah. uh, you both have to get above a five, and then okay. your score. I has will roll to be... my two d four. Strength, right? I have yep. a four d eight. This could go either way. <laughs> Ooh, that's an ace. Oh, no. That's an ace. Oh no! <laughs> no. Eight. Seven. That's a nine. <laughs> oh my god. All right. No pressure, Clem. I got a seven. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so I go up Walk. to Laura. And I, I walk, walk, walk away. I chance. Clem puts I, his hand on Let's see, I walk. my shoulder. Hang on. Oh, and he just seven. shrugs it up. Um, like, I, I have... <laughs> There often come a times when Calpolk needs to hightail it away from some angry varmint. If that's the case, remember the golden rule of Skittle You only have to outrun one person, unless there's a lot of angry varmints, of course. Then you better be fleet footed. Okay, thing. so did Alice take anything? I took the watch, and then I and then I uh, hightailed. <laughs> she was leaving. <laughs> For each point in this edge, your character's base pace is one more than his nimbleness. The character with the nimbleness of D12, for example, blah, blah, blah. So you took a three? I took three, so... So she's trying to try to get away from everyone to before protect, I took to, the Laura. To it, yeah, so I have a... You're gonna act like she was with Horace the whole time. <laughs> so my speed is... Oh, I didn't take that into I think I already took that into consideration. <laughs> so my... I don't know if that what it means, but my pace is 11 and I'm skedaddling. So, so it doesn't look like I had anything to so do with So neither of these two can grab me. She's just getting the fuck out. And I'm going up to Laura, and I'm saying, uh, Miss Laura, uh, uh, we uh, dropped the suitcase, apparently, and uh, found that this is actually Mr. Uh, Seabreeze's suitcase. So uh, I don't know if uh, you need to go back and get your suitcase or if you're all right with that. It's, how close are we to the rest of the the people, like the train. Uh, we stopped. He said that we stopped when he could just see the train. Okay. Oh, okay. But how yeah. far away was so Laura? This she had point, to be pretty far away. Going back to the cargo would be unsafe. But also, yeah. how far away was Laura when we were rifling through the shit? So Laura's probably about fifty yards ahead of you. You Her at the door. <laughs> Harold is behind you. Um, so behind us. Kind of, so yeah, yeah. I was, I'm, I'm keeping Horace with me. Well, there's Horace no, Harold. and Harold. Oh, Harold. Harold. Oh, yeah, yeah, Harold. Know yeah. your cousin's name. Jesus. Wait, did Harold just see us going through the shit? Um, no, let okay. me see. Uh, yes. Okay, God. <laughs> what does he think? Maybe he has some, you know, advice. <laughs> So I guess when I'm walking past Harold, what does he say? He he's you know scratching his his cook's belly, kind of like, you know, lad, I I don't necessarily think you should go confess to rifling through somebody else's things, you know. <laughs> I walked up. The suitcase was open. They already already found the watch and the badge. What watch? There okay. was no watch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm already. Well, like- on my way to the thing. What's going on back yeah. there? I didn't rifle through anything. If anything, I just discovered it and I found that it is not her suitcase. Everyone. And I would think, I would want to know if my fancy suit was not in my bag. I do not think she meant to take two suitcases that were hers. I believe she stole the suitcase. I'm sorry, but I have a lot of the West. And I feel you do. <laughs> and I, I, I am the best. Uh, Harold, you will note that I did handle this with the best. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep oh. going. Oh, we're trying to catch up to Laura. Okay, but when he catches Laura, but with how close with Harold, Horace with me. Us. So I mean, I'm not gonna be trying to let my and with. Four wounds to my gut, so I'm not like running. <laughs> okay, so Wait, she gets to the train so wreck. Wounded, before he should not you. be full on 
full on strength. <laughs> she gets to the train wreck before you, and when you guys get to the train wreck, you see that they've got a nice little bonfire going, and they've Ooh, attempted the to board up the um, windows in the sleeper car because it's it's cold, cold out already, and it's even going to get more cold. Laura, you, can, you just Laura. feel it. You don't know her last your, name. Your your uh, suitcase here that ha- would have. My point of order, order <laughs> is he within his earshot of Seabirth? I thought well, he's telling. Is he Seabirth still there? I thought the only person left from the train was. Oh, Seabirth disappeared, didn't he? Yes. Okay, never so mind. So the only person on the uh, caboose box car or baggage car um, part that fell off is Horace. Horace. And Horace is mute and yeah. shell shocked. No, I just thought Slash I forgot blocked. he had disappeared. <laughs> I thought he was. She was going to admit to going through his bag or stealing his bag. But root. I. So anyway, overruled. Overruled. Just for Laura. clarification, yeah. is Harold the only member of the crew of the yes. whole train we've still encountered at this point? Or, yes. like, after the train yes. wreck, he's yes. the only one. Okay. Of the crew still alive is Harold. That we know of. Well, we don't. We abandoned that trail of blood pretty quickly. I'm just. Gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> that that you know of. Harold in in our said. defense, the trail of blood abandoned us too. <laughs> Based on Western medicine at the time, that could have been one person's fault. <laughs> anyway, we're just doing the math. Miss Laura. Miss Laura. Miss Twenties lady. Who is also, that's what he described her as, like a flapper. Oh. Miss Laura. Miss Laura. Yes? <laughs> uh, this here suitcase uh, got got dropped by that there gentleman over there. Um, and it turns out that it is not your clothes. Um, and it is getting cold out. So uh, I don't know if you would want to go <laughs> back to and find your clothes. Or if you would... Rather. <laughs> Say your pimp squeak. Her, her face goes through about five emotions Ooh. in the span of two seconds. Can one, I scrutinize her face? Yes. <laughs> it, one is abject horror. Two is grave suspicion. No shit. And then three is fuming anger. Roll a cognition check. <laughs> What what kind of cognition is this? Is this uh, to notice something? Yes, it is. Like to notice things? Okay, so I'm going to have to take a minus two to this hole. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am clueless. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, but I am pretty, but it's not persuasion. Okay. Uh, so oh, that's damn. a one. <laughs> and roll uh, quickness. Oh shit! Are you gonna get slapped? Probably. Or stabbed, maybe. Stabbed. That's a six. In the time it takes you to finish the sentence and realize that she is angry, you feel a derringer uh, barrel pushed right up against the wound that's still in your stomach. And she says in a low whisper, so it's just between the two of you. Did uh, you go through that bag? Then I personally up and goes, did uh, not. Miss Laura, Miss Laura, your bag was spilled. It turns out it ain't your bag. Maybe <laughs> the other bag you grabbed isn't yours. Let's take a look in that other bag. I see you and uh, Mr. Bartholomew are getting awfully close. I apologize. (laughs) Can we take a look in that other bag just to secure it? So. I can't believe I'm about to do this. (laughs) So she has one hand on her derringer right up against Bartholomew's gut wound on the beat. Good person. when Clem walks up she puts her second hand <laughs> on his shoulder and pulls close <laughs> to kiss her kiss him on the cheek and whispers 
don't you ever go through my things, and cocks the Derringer, and then uncocks it. And I, I whisper back, to be fair, it to be fair. your suitcase. <laughs> 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 and she turns back I'm not, I'm not being a jerk, I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah. So Clem, roll a narrative. Freaking dogs. <laughs> That's a four? <laughs> okay, so you don't see her hide the... There's your inside of my organs. No, after, she's, <laughs> oh. she just put it away. Oh, okay. So, Wait. so for all you know, he, uh, Bartholomew has successfully wooed... Uh, <laughs> Laura. That's yes, is my <laughs> skill set. That's <laughs> uh, your dummy. So, uh, is that a no on yeah, checking that other bag, Ms. Laura? I'm pretty sure I know the owner of both of these bags. I, the, the bag you have there belongs to my father, you see, and he's a wealthy cattleman down in Texas, and I need to make sure that these belongings get re- returned to him. You understand. So thank you for your help oh. getting it up here, but you I are, think I will take it from here. And she reaches out to take the uh, second bag back. Uh, it's the same kind of exchange when Clem tried to offer it to her. There's a little bit of like a 90s sitcom, like pulling the bag back <laughs> and forth. Like he's not sure. <laughs> Ultimately, he relents. Can Fra- but, uh, Franco in and like help grab it for her? <laughs> take it from Clem and look at him meaningfully and say, oh, Miss Laura, you are such a good daughter, and give it to her. (laughs) She says, she just kind of grunts in a haughty fashion and... (laughs) Haughty or haughty? Haughty. Both. She's a haughty. A haughty haughty. (laughs) Haughty. (laughs) And uh, then she carries it it off to the uh, uh, train wreck, just disappearing into the insides I, with the bags. I let whisper to Clem. She cannot get too far. We can keep an eye on her. I turn around and I whisper to you guys. Shamapel, that's a good point. <laughs> Shamapel. Girl, I, I turn to you guys and I go, uh, should I put a gun in my guts just so y'all know? Is that what they're calling it these days? <laughs> the rest of us have wanted to do Clem, that for I, a while I, now. For following you, I, I think you got the metaphor mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when you found the time, but damn you for a, a quick steed. <laughs> I just look at Clem very quizzically <laughs> and walk back over to Horace. <laughs> oh god, you killed Harry. <laughs> She's dead. Goodbye. I really started this out thinking Clem would be an honest, honorable man, but he's just turned into a dope trying to make better. <laughs> you guys have transformed him into a dumb monster. <laughs> Welcome to Tabletop Gaming. <laughs> I don't know. Least, I think I'm in love with Clem. <laughs> at least you guys aren't murder hobos and deciding to like, kill meet, everybody on the train. Meet out with injustice? Yeah. Because <laughs> then I'd have to get creative. <clears throat> <laughs> Wait, you're not creative yet? <laughs> um, for the record, the canned adventure as it was written you guys have gone so far off the rails I can't <laughs> <have it>. <laughs> you <laughs> stayed on the rails the adventure was off the rails <laughs> oh, technically okay. he's correct okay. what is the... uh, where are we so what, what are you guys going to do for the night well I would say uh, I'm going to try to get Horace to calm down enough that he can start talking you know, I imagine we hand over the food to, uh, 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 what's his name? H- Hogarth? And, uh... Harold. It's not that <laughs> hard of a name. <laughs> uh, Hogarth. Uh, here's the food we managed to get from the, uh, storage You house. mean Harold? Uh, whatever. 
here's the food. Um, I believe that uh, everyone here is probably a bit hungry. And despite what um, Clem has to say, I don't think any of them are going to eat the leather. <laughs> well, not now. <laughs> not with that attitude. <laughs> so, Harold is, just gives you the look like, no shit, I was there when you found it. Yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> um, He's being high flute. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. But then no throws it into the pantry and starts to go to town making a... Um, Kind of a makeshift dinner Lush. for those who are left. It's kind of, you know, boiled broth, slightly softened, uh, um, hard tech. Generally, you know, not. Holy not shit. Our usual um, <laughs> it's certainly, it's no well, lobster thermidor or anything. Yeah. Like that's your usual fare. For me, it is. It, it, On the Sims. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, as for Horace, uh, it seems the warm blanket and warm food and loving my jacket, embrace my, of his my fancy jacket, yeah, has done some good. And you know, he's got his hands wrapped around the cup of coffee that Harold gave him and he's just kind of sitting there and finally after about mm, let's say four hours of this uh, perfect silence he finally starts muttering the, 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 the thing it it, 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 it it got them it, it got it got, got what, all uh, of them what sort of, what sort of thing uh, did you see it it was big as big as was it the Mothman that we talked about? No, that's West Virginia. Right, I'm from Atlanta. We've well, heard of this it. This is Utah. I am from Virginia, and I ever heard of a man made of moths. I said <laughs> West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, you're from East. There Virginia. is only one Virginia in my eyes. <laughs> No. I won't stutter and stand. Thank you, Horace. It will be very straightforward and clear with your answer. It, it. Oh, no. It just, it's, it, it, it. And then he continues to babble nonsensical. Again, from uh, our, from I our have seen this in the war. I do know the cure. Uh, Clem, you all know getting my fifteen-year-old nephew drunk and <laughs> high <laughs> off of the war the drugs. <laughs> did Did you take away Horace's revolver? By the way, I didn't take anything away from him. Uh, okay, so he's he still has his revolver. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> Can he still see? Here, <laughs> wait. What's <laughs> he is missed. He, he is he unable to speak properly. See. <laughs> Alice, I do declare your uh, <laughs> concoction is a miracle. This boy. Can... <laughs> I mean, this. I didn't feel that this was the right time to uh, mention it. To mention it, but yes, it is a miracle cure. <laughs> cure all your ills. Ail all, all your cures. Can it? Yeah. <laughs> can it cure Bartholomew? <laughs> yeah, I got. I got a lot of gut problem right now. I I've your, got. I've got I'm, IBS right now. I meant your brain, Monsieur. <laughs> uh, I, I dig in my bag and I pull out a purple liquid. <laughs> Here, try this one. <laughs> it's just gonna be your guinea pig route. <laughs> It, it I drink the purple one. It tastes vaguely of peppermint, <laughs> and it's a it, little bit chunky. Is this, is purple? this purple source Rex? <laughs> no, it's my special elixir. <laughs> Why do I taste purple? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're spending the night by the fire with some hardtack soup. Uh, yeah. Are any of you going to stand watch, or you just uh, all going to sleep? I can't. I just pass or... out. 
I'll take I'm first. Just first from a uh, visual perception, since I bring the Horace... hardtack soup <laughs> is less lumpy than the purple serum that Alice <laughs> <That's produced. laughs> uh, I have obviously I have a sleeper car, right? I, I'm in the sleeper car, so I take Horace there, and we both sleep in the sleeper car on a bed. Cuddling. Okay. Uh, Clem does volunteer to keep watch. Uh, unbeknownst, and this is off record to the other players, but he does suffer from night terrors, so oh, no. anything he can do to can avoid do uh, going to bed, he will keep watch as long as possible. Uh, Clem just says, oh, well, seeing as how you are all tired, uh, I will keep first watch. You can uh, come relieve me when you feel refreshed. I, I don't feel as uh, imposing you upon an hourly limit. <laughs> I can take second watch. I'm sleeping. I'm not getting. I'm not taking watch. How noble. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good place to call it for tonight. Oh, well. What? Hold a... on. Hold I'm on. Holding. Okay, I'll hold on. Uh, so those of you keeping watch, so Clem and, uh, Frank, uh, Frank roll cognition checks. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, nine. Oof. There's Ooh. a two and a nine. Uh, nine. Oh, okay. Look you both, nine. uh, not... Not at the changing of the guard, because, you know, there's probably a little conversation between the two of you when Franck relieves um, uh, Clem of, of his duties. And not watch. So, Not at the changing of the guard, but throughout the night, uh, you both... You can't quite place it, but it sounds like like skittering on the rocks like leprechauns like midgets on stilts like when did yeah you never you said know, it was midgets okay <laughs> but you never said it wasn't it it's something <laughs> running across the rocks um and occasionally uh you catch uh a glimpse of something just just past the end of the light of the fire you see, you know you see a shadow move but you you can't ever see it see what it is and here's where we'll call it for the night our heroes managed to rescue both rations and bartholomew's cousin from the wreckage but carny footprints and a mysterious suitcase have left them with more questions than answers. Join us next time on OD&D Presents A Fistful of Dice, a Deadlands Adventure. <laughs>